I love British comedy. <laughs> but their wellness-centered reality TV could not be more problematic. And the scandalous Secret Eaters is no exception. As the name implies, the premise of the show is to essentially catch participants eating in secret by hiring undercover investigators to expose the true reason for someone's unexplained weight gain. Participants are later confronted in a caught you in the act moment, solving the big mystery of why they're fat. Get your TV dinners in the microwave, my lovelies, and buckle up for a ride, because more than ever, there's a lot to unpack. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be talking about controversial British reality series, Secret Eaters. But first, you can pause the screen or look at my description to check out my disclaimer and trigger warning. We will be discussing some very problematic diet behaviors and recommendations, and there may be calories on screen at some points. So please feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are not already subscribed, smash that sub button and follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. So for starters, what exactly is secret eating? How common is it? And Ultimately, why do we do it? In short, secret eating involves eating at times, in locations, or in ways where you won't be seen with the intention of hiding what or how much you're eating from others. Considering that survey data suggests 60% of women engage in secret eating at times, and at least a quarter attempt to hide the evidence, there's a good chance that a lot of you watching have done this at some point in your life. Maybe you've waited until your spouse went to bed to have that last slice of cake, or you've consumed mass amounts of diet foods in secret to avoid eating out with friends. Maybe you eat McDonald's for lunch every day and then like air out the car of that fresh fry smell before getting home. I mean, leave me a comment below with your experience. Now, while secret eating is not an official eating disorder, experts believe that it may be a symptom or precursor to the development of a full ED. I'm going to go into detail into why you may be secretly eating in a moment, but let's unpack secret eaters groundbreaking solution first. Thousands of us are mysteriously gaining weight. Is that the heaviest you've ever been? Yeah. Things just aren't adding up. Some days I don't have enough food. Or are they? And it looks like we've been doing a lot more than telling porky pies. Are you aware of how much you're eating? I think we need some help. We'll get there. Ugh. How many people sat in a boardroom and thought, hey, yeah, this would be like a really nice idea for a show? Let's break down why shows like this do more harm than good. Number one, it food shames participants, obviously. Okay, so this show may actually perpetuate secret eating through intense shame, judgment, and embarrassment as they broadcast some pretty undignified footage of participants to the whole effing world. Behind us here, we've got our surveillance board. Check that out. I love it. <laughs> The chocolate bar <laughs> hanging out your gob in the garage. That's mad. Oh, well, I've got no idea how much I was eating. I don't think I really realised just how much I was sort of packing away, really. That's a lot of food. It's not even nine o'clock yet, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no empathy, no compassion, no evidence-based counseling skills. Just ruthless humiliation for the sake of hate-watching views. We talked about this ad nauseum in my reviews of My 600 Pound Life and 1000 Pound Sisters, but all this ends up doing is perpetuating fat phobia for entertainment purposes, which brings me to my next point. Shows like this contribute to weight-based stereotypes. This show portrays folks in larger bodies as lazy, lacking willpower, and being out of control with food. On top of that, the show's entire premise is to essentially portray participants as deceptive liars, aka possessing one of the worst character flaws that there is. Sometimes I'll have a big breakfast, but then that'll be it for the whole day. Yep, that will be it for the day. Until 20 minutes later, we're in a supermarket. According to his food diary, he usually has a salad at this time. Maybe he decided to go out for a salad today. Hmm, doesn't look like a salad shop. Like, I'm getting mad Maury Povich vibes. With a lie detector determined, that was a lie. 
But here we have the embedded negative association that fat people are like asshole liars. And one of the ways in which the show essentially sets these participants up for failure is by relying on a food diary or diary call. Diet recalls are notoriously subject to error. Participants either forget or intentionally embellish their diets when they know that they're being judged or assessed. Sarah's food diary said she was eating around 1,220 calories a day, but she ate nearly 700 a day in snacks alone. That combined with a big roast potato habit and some fast food lunches helped take up her real daily average to a whopping 4,350 calories. It's not just larger body people who do this. We all tend to do this when explicitly being judged. The show relies on this ingrained tendency of most humans because if it weren't for recall bias, there would never be this outrageous caught you kind of aha moment. The truth is larger body folks typically know which foods they should or shouldn't be eating. Society just doesn't let them forget. So this is usually not the reason for secret eating. But instead of diving into these complex psychosocial factors, the show makes it seem like this is some kind of inherent character flaw. And speaking of personality jabs, let's talk about the completely inappropriate, unprofessional name calling on the show. So not only is the show rife with truly abhorrent diet culture language across the board. Just remember Katie, chicken wings today equals bingo wings tomorrow. But participants are typically given a whole host of negatively charged labels based on their eating habits. She's a classic confused calorista. Tracy is a classic delusional drinker. I'm sorry, I get that alliterations are cute, but calling someone delusional because they overestimate their calorie intake seems a bit harsh. I was disrespectful. These are real people with real lives who are in a vulnerable place seeking help and guidance. The last thing they need is a so-called professional addressing them in such undignified and condescending ways. Like I'm truly mortified that they have a dietitian involved in this show. But this brings me to my last issue, and that is that shows like this exclusively reduce obesity to a big fat you problem that you need to fix. Yes, of course, we are the masters of our own body. We have the autonomy to make certain choices over others. And yes, knowledge is absolutely part of making those choices more obvious, which I believe is what this show is trying to suggest. But obesity is a lot more complex than just choosing an apple over chips because you've learned that the apple is a healthier choice. Genetics, food security, age, hormones, medical conditions, medications, mood disorders, sleep, stress, and much more all play a role in why some people end up at the extreme end of the weight spectrum. But I've yet to come across of an episode where the show tries to investigate why participants eat in secret. Instead, the goal is to portray them as sneaky, dishonest, or stupid, to food shame them, and to offer up surface level advice that most of them probably already know. In fact, in one of the episodes where they identified the participant as an emotional eater, their advice was simply to ignore cravings. Not helpful. If you're an emotional eater, remember cravings only last about 20 minutes. So distract yourself until the urge to eat passes. But if you take anything away from this problematic show, it may be an indicator of your own secret eating. Maybe you see some of your behaviors in the Katie's, John's, or Laura's who for some reason sign up for this torture. Oh my God. A tortured artist. I love that. And since the show made zero effort to educate the public on the reasons for secret eating, you might be wondering about your why and what you can do to stop. So why are we so prone to want to eat alone in secret? Number one, to cope with uncomfortable emotions. They eat for comfort. Everything I turn to is food. For everything, whether I'm happy, sad, anything, I turn to food. Occasionally eating to self-soothe difficult emotions is totally normal. We just want to make sure it's not our only coping mechanism 
or that it's not impacting our physical and mental well-being. With that said, emotional eating can actually fuel secretive eating, with one study suggesting that secret eating was associated with depression, anxiety, anger, and low self-esteem. Those with depression were five times more likely to eat in secret. Now, big emotions are still somewhat taboo in our stiff upper lip kind of society, so it's not surprising that a lot of folks may try to conceal the evidence out of fear of being judged. Which brings us to reason number two, to avoid food or body shaming and judgment. Research suggests that folks who eat in secret are more likely to report weight concerns. For instance, one study found that secretive eating is more common in folks in larger bodies who report feeling a loss of control around food. Another study found that secretive eating often occurs in response to body shaming. I mean, no sh Sherlock. Folks in larger bodies have experienced a lifetime of unsolicited advice about their body and food choices. Just look at the comments on this app whenever someone in a larger body has so much as a piece of bread. Like, no wonder you'd want to hide in the bathroom and eat alone. Now, we typically don't see the same food heckling with folks in smaller bodies on this app. I mean, most thin girls doing mukbangs or massive cheat days are celebrated and therefore not only have the confidence to eat a burger in public, but they're emboldened to do it for millions of people online. I went into a lot more detail on that in my Amberlynn Reed video right here, but that brings me to the role of our childhood. So I dive deeper into the connection between childhood food experiences and disordered eating in my video right here. But with the trend of discussing almond moms, ingredient only households, and other potential childhood food traumas on TikTok, it's relevant to be reminded of how parents' relationships with food and their bodies can influence those of their kids. And unfortunately, secret eating can be a byproduct of being exposed to disordered parental eating habits early on in childhood. For example, one five-year prospective study found that secret eating in children was associated with maternal body dissatisfaction, internalization of the thin ideal, and dieting. So in other words, when parents diet in front of their kids or restrict kids of access to certain foods, they will find a way to seek them out in private. Like who else remembers that super politically incorrect 1995 movie Heavyweights with Ben Stiller when the kids at the fat camp were like hiding chocolate bars under their bed. I'd be hiding chocolate bars too if my parents shipped me off to a militant fat camp. So obviously we've established that Secret Eaters is a dumpster fire of a show that does nothing to empathize with or improve the lives of the 60% of adults who apparently engage in secret eating. It does nothing to help support individuals find ways to end this behavior. So if you're wondering what to do about your secret eating, here are some super quick tips. Number one, be kind to yourself. Judgment and shame typically only contributes to the cycle of secret eating. So remember that foods are not good, not bad, and you are not good or bad for choosing certain foods. Number two, develop other coping strategies to emotional eating. As we've established, secret eating and emotional eating are intimately intertwined. So if we find more effective coping mechanisms for our emotional eating tendencies, we're better able to nip the secret eating at the source. Next, develop responses to food shaming. I actually have a whole video of sassy ass responses when people are sharing unsolicited advice about your body or what's on your plate. So strike a power pose, stand in front of your mirror and practice those responses to those triggering scenarios. The more prepared and confident you are standing up for your choices to others, the less desire you'll feel to need to hide them. And finally, speak to a professional. A dietitian and therapy team can be essential to helping you get to the root cause of your secret eating. So please do reach out to a professional if you can. And on that note, I hope you guys can agree that shows like Secret Eaters are toxic as the fact that this show ran for a whole three seasons just reinforces how much people just love to hate watch fat people get ridiculed and shamed. But somehow we're like 10 years since the show launched and I can't say that we've made many more gains. But I would love to hear your thoughts on the show and if you yourself have suffered from secret eating now or in the past. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who or what you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.